so they, they have developed a tool that they can do better. So I used to call it as an auto scheduler system, but that, that sounds like a NAS, so they prefer auto scheduler. Um, I'm Eric Hills, and I'm making all the time. Okay, so Auto Scheduler is a time management extension for Firefox, and our goal is to create something that would manage the user's time without them being previously organized or have current time management skills. And we also wish to create something that could teach them proper time management skills and practice. And the reason it integrates with browsing is the fact that quite often you get people who are not interested in anything or just browsing the internet idly or not actually doing anything, but they might have ideas for things they want to do. So this can be used by those people. So far, we've got the database set up, we've got you know, task editing, we've got a preliminary scheduling algorithm. Uh, we're going to enhance the scheduling algorithm as much as possible, uh, as well as adding a lot more parameters for the configurations for scheduling options. Uh, and then in the future, I think we have browsing automation controlling tabs being blocked away while we're trying to close on something else, or potentially covering up things automatically and reporting something else. We have resources that you need for certain projects. Thank you. 
websites with them or is there a more load up relevant websites for them to use resources? The key here is the fact that the person really wants to do these things anyway, but they might be losing track of the problem effectively. So they have this constant presence guiding them along, telling them what they're doing, and giving feedback. So, um, as I mentioned, some basic uh, development stuff for uh, extensions. Um, initially, when we were looking at working on this project, we had to figure out whether we wanted to do a classic app extension for Firefox or a Jetpack uh, extension. And the difference is that the classic one uh, is the type that they've been all along, where you build the UI and everything uh, built in and just kind of merges with the browser so it's actually fully empowered with all the functions of the browser. Um, and now Firefox is beginning to have Jetpack, which is um, a much simpler system for developing extensions, but it's very limited to get access, um, which has its trade-offs. So for doing both of those, you can use Zool, which is Mozilla's XML UI, which you can also have other elements like HTML, I think, but that's a special language for the interface. Both types of extensions for JavaScript, but if you go to the classic one, you can also have components like XP components that are based on C or like Python and other languages. So I was going to deliver, we determined that we better use the classic one. It would be nice to have the Jetpack SDK. The trouble is that it's just not true at this point. It doesn't have a lot of the access stuff that we would like, and also the fact that um, we're going to be looking at doing stuff to control the browser in ways that would really be considered interference. So they really wouldn't want the Jetpack SDK to actually support the other things that they're going to do. Um, so some of the resources that are available, the uh, JavaScript, or the uh, Jetpack SDK, it's quite nice to have a lot of features, but as I say, it's still a work progress. Uh, it is really scary to find out. But there are other resources. They've got really great pages for extension documentation. Zool and the particular JavaScript details of the properties. Um, so you mentioned uh, like potentially adding functionality to block specific websites. Mm -hmm. About like blocking specific toolbars like Stumble. Yeah. I mean, if you can block certain websites, and, but they can still stumble, I mean, that a lot, you can't handle all of those websites and block them all. So if you could block the toolbar itself, then... Oh, I see. Um, yeah. Well, what, what you might do for certain cases is you just have a whitelist. So rather than blocking specific things, just have to block everything and then block them with things in the world context there. That's actually probably the problem. Unless you have particular sites that you know that are problems in the But for those, that type of thing, um, the add-on we mentioned about the point of inspiration was Leech Block actually has a lot of these stuff for a lot of specific things. I have two questions. What is the, uh, how easy is to explain the code? Um, in theory, it would be terribly complicated, but it's still JavaScript. The trouble is that Chrome doesn't expose all of this stuff. It would be a, a bit like using the Jetpack API. You can still do a lot of things, um, but there's some difference in terms of the flexibility of the API. What's the problem with Jetpack? Uh, what's the problem with JavaScript API, IDE, whatever? I saw you, you were using a very nice JavaScript IDE. Uh, we're using Komodo Edit, which I believe is based on Zool, which is the same framework. What do the former Alpha students have a big uh, plugin for Firefox which had a million downloads and which was written up very well? It is called Fastest Fabs or something. So you are going to promote it and so on? Peter? Once we get something that's really nice. Okay, thank you. That's.